Hello everyone, this is Jumbo Commander and today is a deck tech on a brand new commander from Hour of Devastation, Neheb the Eternal. Neheb the Eternal is amazing. Three red red for a four six, listen to this creature type, legendary zombie minotaur warrior. That type line is just filled all the way up. He has a new mechanic, Afflict 3. So whenever Neheb becomes blocked, the defending player loses three life. So kind of three damage is getting through no matter what. Okay. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, add red to your mana pool for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. Ooh, Neheb is super interesting. I can see the deck forming now. You play Neheb in your first main phase, you play all these spells dealing damage, you attack with Neheb dealing more damage, and then suddenly you have tons of mana to do all sorts of other crazy shenanigans. Play super big spells and do all the damage and oh, I can see Neheb getting out of control. Let's jump right in by talking about how damage equals mana. How can we get the most damage out there so that we can get the most mana in our second main phase. Well, one of the easiest mechanics I can think of is just an old school card called Sizzle. Isn't that a great name for a card? Sizzle. <laughs> Two and a red, Sizzle deals three damage to each opponent. That's it. So in a multiplayer game, you play Sizzle for three, and then if Neheb is out, and you're playing against multiple opponents, you could generate nine, 12 mana in your second main phase, having tons of opportunities to play huge spells. Let's keep going. How about the more efficient Flame Rift? One in a red, Flame Rift deals four damage to each player. So that includes harming yourself, but that doesn't matter. Four damage to all of your opponents, that's like 12 or 16 mana. It's out of control, let's take it up a notch. Fiery Confluence. An amazing card. Two red red, it's modal, but I'm gonna focus on the second one. It deals two damage to each opponent and you can keep picking that three times. So that's six damage to each opponent. If you're playing against three opponents, 18, 18 mana next main phase? Yeah, that's right. That's crazy amounts of mana that you can produce pretty early on in the game and consistently if you keep having cards like this. I'm getting even more excited. How about Price of Progress? doing tons of damage to your opponents and maybe a tiny bit of damage to you. Or late in the game, Acidic Soil, your opponents are gonna be ramping like crazy. This will regularly give you like 15 mana your second main phase. And let's just keep going with these spells. Let's copy them with Pyromancer's Goggles or reiterate them and then buy back the reiterate because we're gonna have tons of mana. And then let's just fireball everyone to death with this tons of mana. Let's just copy the fireball with the Pyromancer's Goggles. Or let's drop huge Eldrazi. And, and actually, this is getting too exciting. It's getting too out of control. And this is where we need to sort of pump the brakes a little bit. Because Naheb can do all of this stuff. But this is a very, very dangerous card. And I want to explain why. Neheb can do crazy things when it's put in combination with the spells that normally you wouldn't see in Commander. Flame Rift. Flame Rift can generate a ton of mana, but on its own, it's a really crappy card in a format where everyone has 40 life. It's just not played. And that's a possible problem with Neheb. If we build a deck so closely tied to this very cool mechanic but very specific mechanic, we could end up with half of our deck being enablers for a commander that we might not be able to cast very easily. And a deck full of enablers without the payoff doesn't function very well. So we have to take a step back and find out what we need to make this deck work really well. When a deck revolves so heavily around its commander, you need some protection, like Lightning Greaves giving them Shroud or Dark Steel Plate making them indestructible. Also in this deck specifically, a card like Ruby Medallion is very valuable. Let's say you want to be playing a bunch of damage, getting Neheb out, and then ramping up to crazy big spells. Great, that's an awesome strategy. Why not have some mana rocks that can help get Neheb out earlier, and also those mana rocks can help 
ramp you to those big spells if Neheb keeps dying over and over again. They serve dual purpose in this deck specifically, and Ruby Medallion is a great example. Let's say we have a Ruby Medallion on the battlefield. Normally we would play Neheb on turn 5, but now on turn 5 we could play Neheb for 4 mana, and play a Flame Rift for a single mana, dealing a bunch of damage and then immediately playing our big threat with all the mana Neheb gains us. That's the kind of play we want to do. We don't want to just jam Neheb onto the battlefield and hope it lasts a turn. We want to really be explosive with this deck, and so that's something we need to be very careful about. Next up is an example of that mana ramp that fits perfectly, Cryptolith Fragment. Now the floor on this isn't that low. We would play a 3 mana mana rock. Easy, right? Yeah, it comes onto the battlefield tapped, but that's a fine inclusion. But then, when you tap it for mana, each player loses one life. Ooh, that's the kind of damage we want with Neheb. Everyone takes a damage, and then your second main phase, bam, you get 3 mana or 4 mana depending upon how many players you're playing against. So it has a very low floor, but if you have Neheb out, this is a pretty high ceiling of letting you mana ramp both in your first main phase and your second main phase. Next up, Sheevan Gorge. Now, this is not a very good card, but I want to mention it because it's important. Sheevan Gorge, it's an untapped colorless mana source. Fine. But it doubles as a mana sink. Let's say you played Cryptolith Fragment in the first main phase and didn't have anything else to do. Bam! Sheevan Gorge people with the extra mana. Or it could be a mana generating tool if you're playing in a huge multiplayer game. I also want to throw out Mindstone as a great example of ramp because it will ramp you into Neheb and your other bigger spells, but then you can cash it in when you have your engines going and you just need more action. So now that all of those disclaimers are out of the way, let's focus on these big mana sinks because if we're going to have a lot of mana, we're going to want to put it somewhere. First up is a favorite of mine, Storm Breath Dragon. Now this was a standard all-star, and I don't see it at commander tables, and I really think he belongs there. Three red red for a 4-4, four, four, flying haste protection from white dragon. But most importantly, for seven mana, five red red, you can monstrous this for three, putting three plus one plus one counters on it, and when it gets monstrous, it deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of cards in that player's hand. I'm regularly looking at my opponents hoarding hands of like six and seven cards. Let's just take a mediocre case scenario. Uh, you play a Storm Breath Dragon, you monstrous it, and everyone has three cards. Wait a second. In a four-player game, that's nine damage. That means if Neheb's on the battlefield, you've generated mana for your next main phase. And actually, if you monstrous to Storm Breath Dragon, it's now a 7-7 seven, seven flying protection from white. You could probably get in for seven. That means that you're dealing seven more damage. This Storm Breath Dragon could generate you 16 mana in your second main phase. And that's being very conservative. And it punishes those blue decks that love playing their reliquary towers and just drawing cards all over the place. I love this card. Trust me, play it. You will love it too. Next, we have one of the best mana sinks in the deck. It is a color shifted pestilence. Pyrohemia. Two red, red at the beginning of each end step. If there are no creatures, Pyrohemia goes away. But this enchantment has one red, deals one damage to each creature and each player. Ooh, this is great because in a multiplayer game, you sink one red in and in your second main phase, you'll get more than one red mana out. You just have to make sure not to kill your Neheb. But your Neheb actually has a pretty high toughness. Toughness of six? That's pretty good. You could pay five into Pyrohemia, and if you're in a four-player game again, you're going to generate 15 mana during your second main phase. You can do crazy stuff with that. You could even pump it all into Pyrohemia again, doing a total of like 20 damage to everyone in one turn. This is how games end. Let's move on to another great creature, 
Ashling the Pilgrim. This is a wonderful mana sink because you could just keep pumping mana into this elemental and then growing him. And then when you need to, you can wipe the board in one go and then suddenly it does a ton of damage to everything. And then you have a bunch of mana in your second main phase to rebuild. This is also a great combination with Dark Steel Plate. Just throw it on Ashling the Pilgrim and just keep everything that you don't want off the battlefield. As we move down the list, we get a little bit more inefficient. Walking Ballista. This costs four to put a plus one plus one counter on it. Mm, I know, but sometimes when you really need to get mana, you could cash in your Walking Ballista to just deal damage to an opponent and then recoup some of that mana on the back end when Neheb gives it to you but it's still a place to put mana and that's good. Obsidian Fireheart. Now this is a fun place to put mana. Just sink three mana in it and then their lands start dealing damage to them. That's really cool. One downside is it has at the beginning of your upkeep, that means your opponent's upkeep. So the damage from these lands will not trigger your Neheb, but it's still a really fun mana sink. And I really like having a bunch of lands constantly deal damage to them from this crazy Obsidian Fireheart. You know what? We have all of these mana sinks. Let's finally use a card that's incredibly difficult to use. And that's Braid of Fire. Braid of Fire is a crazy enchantment but deceptively powerful. One in a red, cumulative upkeep, add one red to your mana pool. That's it. Now, one thing that's important to note is that this happens during your upkeep, and mana in your mana pool will empty as you go from phase to phase. So when you move toward your main phase when you want to cast spells, all that Braid of Fire mana is gone. So you need to utilize it by having mana sinks, ah, we have mana sinks, or instant spells. And we plan to have instant spells in this deck, especially instant spells that use up mana. How about fault line? Ooh, you can just deal damage to everything. It's an earthquake, but at instant speed or comet storm doing tons of damage all over the place. Fall of the Titans, actually fall of the Titans is very interesting because if you're playing spells in your first main phase, uh, that means you've activated Surge. So let's say you do a bunch of damage in your first main phase and the Heb triggers, gives you a bunch of mana. You can now Surge out Fall of the Titans and do a ton of damage to two different opponents. This is the burn deck I have been looking for. Let's explore a few more mana sinks, but these ones are, I'm not as excited about it. The best of these bad mana sinks is Welder Automaton. Four mana deals one damage to each opponent. Mm. So, four mana, and then you deal one. I don't know. Uh, this will rarely net you mana, but it is a place to put mana. And this is the best of what's coming up, so I'm going to move through them pretty quickly. Flamekin, Spitfire, four mana, one damage to target creature or player. No, 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 no. Scalding Devil, three mana, one damage to target player. All right, let's keep going. Uh, this Master of Yamabushi will do one damage target creature or player. Just target, see, all of these are targeting the Sheevan Hellkite, target creature or player. Flame Wave Invoker, target player. This Valakut Invoker, same thing, it targets. These would be great if you could in fact spread the damage among all of your opponents, uh, but targeting, I don't know, it just doesn't work for this deck very much. But if you wanted a more budget version and you wanted to be able to interact with creatures, these could be great for you, so don't just dismiss them out of hand. Next up, Just Damage. Do you know what? I think that this deck doesn't have to be cute. We don't have to have all these mana sinks and this braid of fire and instant speed stuff. We could just have a deck where we attack people or do damage and then use the mana to play more things and do more damage. I know, it's, it's an amazing concept, but I want to explain just a few creatures that just have such great synergy. How about Heartless Hedetsugu? This five mana legendary Ogre Shaman deals damage to each player equal to half that player's life total. Half. Imagine the amount of mana you could produce. Uh, I'm gonna take away half your life, get all of the mana in my second main phase, and then just fireball you all to death. It, it works, it works, it's so crazy. 
And also, if we're playing a burn deck, we want to lower everyone's life total. It's just great. How about Fanatic of Mogus? Not as powerful as Heartless Headed Sugu, but this Fanatic is also a Minotaur. Uh, so they're buds. They're buds. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, he deals damage to each opponent, love that each opponent, equal to your devotion to red. So he's already doing one damage to each opponent just because he has a red pip. But if we're playing him with Neheb on the battlefield, he's doing three to each opponent, generating like nine mana in your second main phase. Yeah, that's a solid Minotaur. I love it. Let's keep going with a little bit of spell synergy. How about Thermo Alchemist? It deals one damage to each opponent when you tap him, and spells cause him to untap. Ooh, I like that. This could be sort of an instant sorcery tribal deck where you Thermo Alchemist over and over again and cast more things, and then you have huge X spells to finish it out. There are other creatures that will tap to deal one damage to each opponent. Lobber Crew will do it, although it's hard to untap Lobber Crew. And Nettle Drone will do it. And uh, you might be able to have a few artifacts in here that will untap Nettle Drone, dealing more than one damage to each opponent each turn. But let's stay on the spells plan. I love that idea because I mentioned a lot of spells so far. How about Gutter Snipe? When you cast spells, two damage to each opponent. You just cast a simple spell and then suddenly you reap the benefits of tons of mana in your second main phase. But we don't need all this fancy spell stuff. Let's just smash face. How about a card like Inferno Titan? Inferno Titan does damage when it enters the battlefield, but also has the great ability of fire breathing. Fire Breathing is great with this because you can invest mana and get it back in your second main phase. That is if you can be sure to get damage through. Steel Hellkite has a little bit of a different type of Fire Breathing. You have to invest two to give it plus one plus zero until end of turn, but it is an essential card in monocolored decks because it can deal with stuff that red has a hard time dealing with. Is there an enchantment you need to deal with and you don't have your one Chaos Warp? Uh, steal Hell Kite it away. Uh, yeah, that's an important ability that you need to have in monocolor decks. You know, I've mentioned just attacking. Why don't we just never stop attacking? You know, I like attacking. Let's just attack forever. How about Aggravated Assault? For three red red, it's an enchantment where you can untap all creatures you control after this phase. There's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. Play this ability only anytime you can play a sorcery. So you can activate this with Neheb's mana during your second main phase, and this would trigger another combat phase. That's pretty great. But wait, then Neheb says, at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, you will then add red mana to your mana pool for all of the life your opponents have lost this turn. This builds upon itself, because as you get extra combat phases, you get extra mana in your after-combat main phase and then you can spend some of that mana into more Aggravated Assaults. Not every extra combat card will work as well as Aggravated Assault, but all of them will let you deal a lot more damage and get a lot more mana in your second main phase. So all of them might warrant a look, especially if you're interested in a heavy combat-based build of this deck. Lastly, I have a few creatures that are great at attacking, but also give us some utility. Sin Prodder has Menace, allowing you to get in pretty easily, but also has a really great trigger. And I love this political trigger in Commander. You turn over a card and anyone can say, I'll take that damage. If they do, the card goes in the graveyard, whatever. But if they don't, you get to draw a card every turn. That's great. And imagine with Neheb on the battlefield, people aren't going to want to give you mana in your second main phase. So they're forced to either give take damage and give you mana or give you a card it's like a win-win these are called punisher mechanics and they're not the best but i think that they're really fun and political another version that i really like is combustible gear hulk if an opponent doesn't let you draw three cards they're going to take the cmc worth of damage for three cards milled into your graveyard and if you're running cards like ulamog combustible gear hulk can deal a ton of damage so both of these cards represent damage and represent card draw, which is kind of what you want. Although you don't get to pick exactly what you want, which means they're not as strong as some other cards. In fact, I'm going to use this to transition into some damage-based utility, because that's kind of what this is. Let's move on to a more powerful form of card draw in Chandra, Torch of Defiance. 
her plus one ability will let you exile a card and play it if you want to. Card draw, great. But if you don't, it deals two damage to each opponent. Two damage to each opponent. Chandra is card draw and damage to each opponent. You can ramp with her plus one just by getting two red, great. If you have Neheb on the battlefield, you can ramp by dealing two damage to each opponent. Wonderful. If you have plenty of mana, you can plus one and exile that card and play it. Chandra does it all. There are other Planeswalkers that could do something, but they're not going to touch Chandra. How about Koth generating some mana, untapping a mountain, his ultimate is insane, or the old Chandra, which can ping players, not each opponent, but players, Whenever you play red spells, she untaps. Now, I kind of wish that she didn't even flip, that you could just keep pinging and untapping with red spells, uh, but Chandra Fire of Kaladesh is just okay. Let's move on to some more powerful card draw abilities. How about Null Spine Dragon? When Null Spine Dragon enters the battlefield, you may discard your hand and draw cards equal to the damage dealt to target opponent this turn. Now, I really wish it was all your opponents this turn, but that would be too good. But if you have all of these abilities that deal direct damage to someone, you can just refill your hand with Null Spine Dragon super, super easily. And then also have the mana to be able to use some of those cards. I mean, just a great card to be able to refill your hand. Speaking of which, an even better card, Molten Psyche. Each player shuffles the cards from his or her hand into his or her library and draws that many cards. Great, you just do a little mini wheel. A winds of change. But with Metal Craft, it deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of cards that players draw on this turn. Oh my gosh. If you do a wheel and everyone just kind of draws four cards, you've generated a ton of mana and you've refilled your hand with relevant cards that you get to cast. Do you know what? There's another card that does damage based on how many cards you draw Psychosis Crawler. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. So that means every single turn, you'll draw at least one card and then generate a bunch of mana during your second main phase if you happen to have Neheb on the battlefield. I felt the need to include a really important card in this section, and that's Sulfuric Vortex and Stigma Lasher. Because this deck is based on doing a lot of direct damage, we want to make sure our opponents can't gain life. And even though the Sulfuric Vortex doesn't really trigger to give us mana, it's the life gain that's really critical to shut down. A little bit more utility via Shino Heretic can tap and destroy an artifact and deal damage! It's like a really, really good Smash to Smithereens that always gets killed before I have a chance to activate it. But he literally is a kill on sight because you can just go around just smashing people's soul rings over and over again, he's great. And if your playgroup plays a lot of blue, Jaya Ballard, is really strong because just red discard, tap, destroy target blue permanent, ugh, insane. But also she has the added benefit of dealing six damage to each creature and each player, and that can give you a lot of mana. I wanna mention one more popular effect, and that's multiplying damage effects. Furnace of Wrath and Dictate of the Twin Gods are very popular. I'm not going to include these two cards in my version because I feel that they're really risky. I feel like whenever I play them, I get teamed up against and I don't have enough time to finish the game, but they are undoubtedly powerful. That has been my Neheb the Eternal Mono Red Super Damage Deck Tech. I love Neheb. I was super excited in the beginning, and even though I had to take a step back, I still think Neheb is super broken powerful. And if left unchecked, you will deal a ton of damage to the whole table, play some stupid X spell or some gigantic Eldrazi and no one will be able to touch you. This general is super powerful and well worth a build around. I have to take my hat off to wizards because not only is this powerful, it's super interesting. I really love the push and pull of this general and building around him. The commander cards from this set have been top notch and I'm super excited to break down even more on this channel. This has been Jumbo Commander with a Neheb the Eternal deck tech. If you like this deck tech, I'm gonna have more Hour of Devastation Generals. So make sure to subscribe so you know when I come out with the next Commander deck tech. And if you wanna follow me on Twitter, I'm at Jumbo Commander, or you can send me an email, jumbocommander at gmail.com. I'll see you guys next week with more great Commander content.